So thank you for joining uh, another video once again um, and today we're going to showcase another one of our 3D printed tools that we do. Um, now this is my own design of a collector cutting fixture, um, it's 3D printed and what this simple cheap 3D printed tool will allow you to do is make your own merge collectors out of scheduled tubing. So we're going to quickly show you how to use this fixture, it's dead simple, uh, we've taken all the guests work out for you um, and all the hard work of um, calculating your compound rotations. So what we have here is our little 3D printed fixture tool here. Now as you, you can probably see is on the top here we have this sort of like uh, half moon type arrangement on the top and that is how we work out your compound rotation. So it's a case, simple case of uh, just putting a simple mark on your tube, like so. And all we do is we insert our pre-cut tube into the fixture. Now what we do is we line up that line there with just the edge of the fixture, like so. Put in your bandsaw, set your backspace in, do your first cut, then after you've done your first cut, loosen it, rotate it around to the next spot, which is there. Again, just sort of like loosely line that line up with the edge of that piece there. Lock it in, in your bandsaw, second cut, repeat four times and you'll have yourself a merge collector simple as that so this fixture is designed to be locked in your bandsaw throughout the whole entire process once you've got it locked in your vise there'll be no need to undo the vise unless you do an offset cut that's uh, that's another video for another day and then you just simply undo your lock bolt on the back and then you can remove your slug and your blank at will so you can swap them out and put your next one in. So I spoke about backspacing a second ago. Now what your backspacing is, is the distance between the blade and the fixture. Now that's important and I'll show you for why. So your backspacing determines the distance between your collector runners. Now that's important for two reasons. Obviously if it's too tight, you're gonna to struggle to get a weld all the way in there uh, by the time you've got your final runner on. Um, and also, obviously, how you can get in there to weld your collector inside and out. Now, this is our usual way we do it, our usual backspacing. Um, I couldn't tell you which the backspacing is. I just know in my head up here, I know where it needs to be. So this is another collector we've done with the same backspacing on both sides. And then if I rotate it there, look, you can see the backspacing is uh, massively different. Now this, is, now this collector here was designed for a T3 flange. It's an offset cut. Uh, we'll cover offset cuts in another video if you're interested. Um, so yeah, once you've got your backspace is set, it's very important. And then you get a nice looking collector like that. Now, I know this is a crude method, but this is the way I like to do it. So this is a, a standard uh, M8 bolt, roughly about an eight mil thick. And I like to use this to set my backspace in. So let just put the, the fixture up using that bolt there as clearance, lock it in the vise, pull the nut out. So this fixture is dead simple to use. We've taken all the hard work and the guesswork out for you in calculating your, your rotation angles. So in this case, we've got a 90 to seven degree mark out just here. Take out your marked tube, line this up with the edge of the plastic here. Uh, very important that you use a tool to lock in. Obviously don't go too tight. It's plastic, not metal. You don't need to go too tight. You just need to literally just nip it up and so that'll lock the piece into place 
um, and then do a cut. And then after your first cut, take your Allen wrench, loosen it up, lift your blade up, go take your elbow and do your second cut. So that simple, rotate the round until that line meets up with the edge of the plastic. There, lock it back in. Let's do a second cut. So there we have our first cut section. So all you need to do is repeat that step four times. Um, prep them them together and you end up with your collector. Now I'm not going to go show you the full process of building a collector with this tool because we did it with the LPS Fab tool, uh, video cards just there. Now the question which is burning in your head I'm sure is that is this better than the LPS Fab jig that we showed in the last video? Um, simple answer is no. Um, with the LPS Fab jig um, you've got infinite control to a certain extent on that tool so you know you can go all, all the way up to 45 degrees and uh, you've got a mark out there for 180 degrees rotation now the LPS fab tool is more of a tool for the professional um, when you've worked out your correct angles uh, bits and bobs uh, whereas this tool is more designed um, for the hobbyist if you just want to make your own collector just the once um, it's a perfect tool for that there's no reason why, um, for the professional user, why these tools couldn't last a long time. You just need to bear in mind that this is plastic and the LPS Fab uh, fixture is, you know, it's all machined um, metal, steel, aluminium. So we do offer these um, in a few sizes and arrangements. Uh, we offer all of them in a fixed 20 degree angle and we do them in an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and then we do uh, angle cuts from three into one merge collectors all the way up to six into one merge collectors. Um, they are one trick ponies, so if you need to do a couple of sizes, you know, order a couple of the ones that you need. Now price, price is the most important part, I'm sure. Now, 25 quid, 32 US dollars for this, um, and you get your stainless steel nut and your bolt, um, you know, for 25 quid, you basically get exactly what you've seen just here. Now, how does that compare with the LPS Fab Jig? Well, I think at this time of this video shooting, the LPS uh, Fab Jig is 380 US dollars plus shipping. Um, and if you're over the pond like I am, you've also got uh, the tax man to bear in mind when he shafts you up the arse for import tax and duty, as I did. Um, so yeah, um, not a bad tool, uh, well worth having if you're manufacturing manifolds, even as a, uh, even as a backup. Um, you know, the, the good side about these particular fixtures is you know, you, you've not got to sit there working out, marking out the degree gauge, uh, the angles worked out for you. So once again, thank you for watching this video. Um, if you're interested in purchasing one of, one of these tools, um, links down below in the description, website links just here. Um, and as you can see on the website here, we've got a, you know, we've got the tubing size in like a nice drop down menu and then you get to select um, your collector type, three, four, five, six into one. Um, and obviously we do ship worldwide. Um, we can do a bit of a package deal if you want to buy more than one just drop us a message and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you for watching